you went to St. Mike's 1980, 1981. That's a long time ago. Yes. Can you help us understand how this could happen in 2018? Sexual violence is always about a power dynamic. And within a school like St. Mike's, there's a huge power dynamic. There is the, the power of the school itself and getting accepted to such a prestigious institution. So right away, the administration, the school, the alumni association, everybody's closing in, closing in the ranks because they want to protect an image. When you are part of, a, of an elite sports team in one of these academies or these schools, it carries a lot of privilege. And I think what's going on there is these young men are afraid of losing it. And I know when I experienced an incident at St. Mike's, I was new to the school, I had made the football team, I've, you know, to me it was a dream come true to be in this great school and to be part of the football team. I had a very similar experience to what we're, what's going on in, in the news right now. And I know that that was not unique to me at the time and I, and I can imagine that this has been going on for a long time. What happened to you? Was it a sexually violent incident? It was a sexual violent act, yes. Can you share anything more with me? You know what, I, I, it's already traumatizing enough talking about it. Um, sure. Usually it's four or five kids. Some of older players, people who are bullies, people who have a little bit of you know, privilege and sway on the team and in the school. And they corner a new person, a kid who's vulnerable, a kid who's just trying to fit in, a kid who's desperate to stay on that team. And they take advantage of them. And that's what happened to me. I think I dismissed it as just boys will be boys. It's that culture of, you know, you just want to fit in. It was the initiation, right? And I just assumed that, you know, it happened to me, and so now there was a check mark beside my name. They're going to leave me alone. I'm part of the club. Did you tell anyone? No, I didn't tell anybody. And I, and I, would, I would be very surprised if any of these boys told anyone. I'd be very surprised if other alumni who have gone through similar incidents, maybe they're in their 20s now, 30s or 40s, or even older, I'd be very surprised if any of them have ever told anybody in their lives about what happened to them, if something happened to them at St. Mike's. Because I think we just dismissed this as part of the game. And I think that's part of this story. But we're in the Me Too movement right now. And things that we brushed off, thought were normal, we don't think that anymore. And I think that's why this conversation is so awkward right now. We hope that our kids are more self-aware than perhaps we were yeah. in the 1980s. That's what's so shocking to many of us as parents. I think that's part of the reason why we're getting a lot of backlash from some parents at St. Mike's who are trying to, you know, like let's just downplay this a little bit. Like you know, we, we want to keep the kids safe. Our primary importance is to keep the children safe at the school. But let's have the media back away from this a bit. Let's, let's let the investigation run its course. But as someone who's been impacted by sexual violence, I would ask that the absolute opposite happen. Let's break this open. It's a club, but you know, I, I've been careful in terms of casting blame on St. Mike's. I don't think this is a unique problem to St. Mike's or to private schools. This is happening across our city and across our country. And we would be naive to think it isn't. As a, an alumni, would you be comfortable sending your son or your grandson now to well, St. Mike's? Well, my son's now 30, and we said, uh, you know, if he were in grade 8 and thinking about going into St. Mike's next year, w would we put him in there? And the answer is absolutely no. Why? Because I, I, I think they have to earn that trust back. Right now, I think that trust has been broken. And as a parent, I would be concerned. Where's the break? Where's the broken chain there? To me, this entire thing rests at the administration and, and, and the teachers. As, as educators, I mean, I'm a former teacher, as an educator, you are made aware that whenever something like this comes to light, your first responsibility when it involves a minor is to contact the authorities. You can have internal audits. You can do interviews with your students. You can expel. You can do all that stuff after the police have been contacted. So what could we do in a school environment that would turn those people involved in an incident like this into heroes instead of the people who are bullying them? Well, I think right away, if, if, if it turns out that there is, through the audit, that there is a cultural problem within the sports, 
you got to shut those sports teams down for a year, two years, whatever it takes. Start again. Do you have any doubts that there were, there are a number of other incidents over the last 20 to 30 years that could be investigated? I now? think there are many that could be investigated. And I, part of this conversation to me involves a lot of what we recently experienced in the Kavanaugh confirmation hearings for the Supreme Court in the States. I think there are a lot of former alumni from St. Mike's in their 20s, 30s, 40s and upwards, I'm in my 50s, who are probably a little concerned right now that this is hitting the paper as they're sitting in their offices and their firms and they're realizing that this can come back to haunt them. And we might need that to happen in order for us to create a safe environment for our young men and women to grow up in a safe environment. I, I, I'm not looking for anything in here. I'm not looking for an apology from St. Mike's. I'm not looking for any class action lawsuit. I'm not looking for that. But if my grandson ends up going to St. Mike's, I want to make sure that he's going to have a, a safe experience there. Because let's, let's be honest, we should be proud of St. Mike's. St. Mike's has, has produced some incredible people over the years. Mm -hmm. Let's give them the tools that they can keep doing that without all this other hidden stuff.